Hey, it's Pastor Kerry, and welcome to session one of the Life Group Study, The Case for Miracles. And it's based on our teaching pastor, Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Miracles. And I hope every one of you get the book. And in the back of the book is the Life Group Study Guide, where you'll find all your questions. And of course, we're going to get right to the teaching, and Lee's doing the teaching, and it's powerful, and it is going to be life-changing. So I'm so excited that your life group is going through this study. And I just want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, first, after you watch the video teaching, then you go to the back of the book and you talk about the questions that are listed there in the study guide and just have a great discussion. And then also, I encourage you to invite more friends next week to your life group. Think about a friend, a neighbor, a relative, a coworker that you can invite into your life group and just enjoy doing life together. Well, now welcome our teaching pastor, Lee Strobel, with session one of The Case for Miracles. Hi, I'm Lee Strobel, and I'm so glad that you're part of the study on The Case for Miracles. You know, it's such a privilege to be part of Woodlands Church, and I'm thrilled whenever any of my resources can be used and, and helpful in the church here. So we're glad that you're part of this. We hope it's an encouragement to you. We hope that you'll grow in your faith. We hope that you'll ever more be in awe of God uh, after having gone through this study of his uh, supernatural activity in the world even today. You know, when I did the book, it was really because, um, like a lot of Christians, uh, sometimes we tend to have a deistic view of God. By that I mean, uh, God sometimes seems to us to be distant and detached and disinterested in us. That's how a deist sees God. A deist believes God created the universe and he kind of walks away. And even though we know that God wants a relationship with us, sometimes I think we get in, in the middle of our faith and things get a little cold and God seems distant and, and we wonder sometimes, it, does God still want to be active in my life? Does God still want to intervene supernaturally in my activities and so? And so, you know, I'm a skeptic by nature, my DNA, and my background's in journalism and law, so you can imagine I'm a skeptic. Um, and so I wanted to spend some time really investigating, uh, is God still divinely active, doing miracles in our world today? And that's what resulted in the book after a two-year investigation. And what I found is that God is not the deistic God that sometimes we picture him to be. But God is personal. He is close. He is available. He is active. He is loving. He is gracious. He is kind. He is powerful. And we should um, build a, a, an ongoing relationship with him knowing that he has the power and often the inclination to intervene in our lives. So when I did this book, I decided to go and interview the most famous skeptic in America, Dr. Michael Shermer. Uh, he's the editor of Skeptic Magazine. And the reason I did that is I wanted to tell both sides in the book. I wasn't afraid of the case that he would make against miracles. In fact, I told him, I said, hey, give me your strongest case against miracles. And I gave him three chapters, the first part of this book, uh, to really build his case against miracles because I knew that it wasn't going to be a very strong case. And so I allowed him to do that. One thing to be aware of as you're reading that section of the book is don't take everything he says at face value. In other words, the rest of the view kind of uh, book kind of responds to some of the allegations and statements that he makes. So there are three areas where he's just got it wrong. And much as I like Michael Shermer and I consider him a friend, um, he's got a few things wrong. Um, first of all, he relies on David Hume, the Scottish philosopher and skeptic from the 1800s. And now, David Hume made a lot of mistakes in his philosophy. And even though uh, Shermer makes it sound like Hume gives the knockout argument against miracles, as you'll see later in the book, it's just not true. Secondly, he has a very strange view of the Gospels and the New Testament. Thinks they're, they're um, fairy tales, basically, parables, all parables made up to make a moral point, but not being historically accurate. 
And you'll see, as you'll see later in the book, um, we can trust the Gospels as being accurate in terms of what they tell us historically. And so I think he's wrong on that. The third place I think he's wrong is when he talks about this study called the step study, which according to him, disproves the fact that God is intervening through prayers. Um, he cites that study and says, basically, you can give me all the anecdotes you want about miracles, but science, this $2.4 million 10-year study, says that the prayers of Christians make no difference whatsoever in the healing of people. And you read that and you go, wow, that's pretty powerful. Let me just warn you that don't take that at face value because you're going to find something quite the contrary later in the book. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'm going to tell the whole story behind that study and it changes everything. But I don't think we should be afraid to read the sentiments of a skeptic like Michael Shermer. So let's read them. Let's consider them. And then in the rest of the book, we'll respond to that and build the affirmative case for the case for miracles. So I'm glad you're along for the ride.